Hello everybody, hope you're doing great and are ready to learn something new about Hekla. Hekla has to be the most famous volcano in Iceland throughout history. The mountain itself is beautiful and it has made itself present every now and then with large eruptions that cause major damage. The mountain rises a mere 1488 kilometers above sea level and has a rich like look to it but it is considered to be a volcano cone. The rich like look can be explained by Hekla's geologically young age, which is estimated to be only around 7,000 years old. So with that out of the way, let's talk more about Hekla's details, history and future. Hekla is a strato slash fissure volcano. It has all the characteristics of a strato volcano but also possesses a 5.5 km long fissure that hosts all of the eruptions that are within the mountain itself. I say that because Hekla's volcano system stretches further than just the mountain, like most volcano systems. It's 40 km long in a southwest to northeast line and around 7 km wide. Hekla has a large magma chamber and what comes out of there is mainly basalt and andesite. Hekla is also a pretty unique system here in Iceland, probably because she's so young. She's highly active despite being quite the way off the main volcano belt. She also has more amount of silicon dioxide in her basaltic andesite lava, and it's the only volcano in Iceland to produce what is called kalk alkaline lava, which is just a type of lava with a good dose of different metals that give it a rusty look. Hekla's eruptions must be pretty powerful considering her world fame, and sure they are. They're not just powerful, but also rather deadly. You see, the tephra produced by Hekla is fluorine rich, which is poisonous to animals, and back in the days you can just imagine how annoying that must have been. Since settlement, Hekla has erupted 20 times and some of the eruptions were pretty large. Ironically, the first eruption from Hekla since settlement was the largest one to ever be recorded. It was a VEI 5 eruption and threw out 2.5 cubic kilometers of its iconic tephra, which covered half of Iceland. After that eruption, Hekla was said to be the gate to hell. Who knows, it might as well be. And I don't blame my distant ancestors for that claim, since the way Hekla greeted their arrival was pretty hellish. Since then, Hekla has produced several VEI-4 eruptions. The most notable were the ones in 1510, which caused famine to break out in Iceland, wiping out more than 400 people. Another large eruption was in 1693, and is said to be the most destructive eruption of Hekla in recorded history. Ash is thought to have reached all the way to Norway, and is thought to have taken the lives of over 500 people. It lasted for 10 months. Then there are also plenty of less explosive eruptions that often lasted longer, with the longest one going on for two years, that created large lava fields. That eruption was pretty powerful, the one that lasted for two years, especially in the beginning. It was a VEI-4 eruption. It wasn't that explosive and powerful during the entire eruption though. After the first few days, it calmed down and became less explosive, and continued that way for two years. It ended up producing Hekla's second largest lava field, which covers 65 square kilometers and has a volume of 1.3 cubic kilometers. In my last video, I talked about Katla, and if you remember, I talked about the glacial floods that follow all of her eruptions. Does Hekla have something like that? No. There aren't any large glacial ice caps in the mountain of Hekla, so there is no danger of any massive floods. But Hekla has one trick up her sleeve to match Katla's Jökulhlaup, and that's her aseismic behavior before eruptions. Most volcanoes show clear signs sometimes months or even years before they actually erupt. But Hekla? Hekla likes to surprise people, 
Baragdin no more than two hours after showing the first signs of magmatic activity. And that's a nice trick. The signs she gives before eruptions seem to be in forms of large earthquakes based on history, as our ancestors reported intense shaking that were followed by an eruption in Hekla shortly after. If we take a look at Hekla's first years, we see that there were much more powerful eruptions. There were four notably large ones that each got their name since they left a very clear ash layer in Iceland's soil which makes it easier to determine the age of geo and archaeological things. The largest one was H3, or Hekla 3, and is probably the single largest eruption of Hekla and spewed out an estimated 7.3 cubic kilometers of volcanic rock, giving it a VEI value of 5. During those days, Hekla didn't erupt nearly as often as it has done since settlement, so she took more time to produce eruptions back then, which in turn made them larger. Quantity over quality. So, now you know a little bit more about the beautiful strato slash fissure volcano Hekla. But what can we expect in the near future? Some of you that watch the update videos might be familiar with the recent activity in Vatnafjall. A few days ago, there were three earthquakes over three in magnitude, all within two minutes of each other. Now that's pretty suspicious, but no eruption followed and there weren't any follow-up earthquakes. After the eruption in 1970, Hekla definitely entered a new phase, with eruptions every 10 years. It's now been 20 years since the last eruption, and measurements show that Hekla is ready to erupt, but she won't tell us in advance, so we'll just have to wait and see. For everyone who made it here, thank you so much for tuning in and sticking to the end, Definitely leave any questions and other ideas in the comments. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see most of you in the next video. Thanks for watching.